Make sure to go and check out all of our latest merch at paddockmerch.com. We've got loads of new designs and even more products come in all the time. With two or more items, you get 20% off using the code PADDOCK20. And if you remember, there's even bigger discounts available. Link is in the description. Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCullough and we are back and I have been joined by Joe Smith and of course, our kid, a.k.a. Scotty, a.k.a. Jay's co-host on the Scotty and Marty <laughs> podcast as well. Links are all in the description below on where to find Scotty. Scotty, thank you for joining us. Nah, man, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a long time coming. Mm. It has been a while since you've been on the channel. And of course, we've got Joe, who's always about and you know who Joe is. Joe, is you, you, you all right, yeah? I'm doing great, yeah. You you sound a bit bunged up, but I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. don't worry about me. I'm going to be <laughs> quiet today. I'm just going to sit here and listen to you two because today we're having a little bit of a discussion. Now, we're not getting into all this in, out, in, out, shake it all about stuff, just absolutely just, you know, doing all that Twitter stuff. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion between Manchester United fans. Now, I already know these lads, their opinions differ a little bit. So it will obviously make for a great discussion. Um, but we're going to talk about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and where he stands. The next 10 games for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer are huge as Manchester United manager, not only because of where we stand currently, you know, after some poor results in the league, in the Cups as well. And of course, losing our opening game in the Champions League. Few injuries now in the defence, some difficult fixtures on the horizon. Things could get real sticky real quickly. But we're here to talk about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his future and maybe what he needs to do to still be Manchester United manager at the end of the season and how he can turn around this slumping form that we've seen at Man United so far. But before we do get stuck into the little bit of a deb the debate, we'll find out where both the lads currently sit and how they're feeling at this moment in time. Um, anyone want to go first in particular? You want me to go first, Joel? Uh, yeah, okay. go on. I um I'm in a sort of unique position where I don't I don't want Ole Solskjaer to get sacked and I never want a manager to get sacked, but I've never felt that he was the right man for the job, uh, and the evidence is just mounting uh, after every season and to where we are now that he hasn't got the capabilities to make Manchester United the winning force or back to how we used to be. I just, I, I just don't see it at all. There's no evidence, not enough evidence for me to say that we're on the right path with him in charge. Okay, um, Joe, where you stand currently? I think over the last couple of years, we have seen that whether, you know, obviously there's no concrete proof that he can win those big trophies because we haven't won them and that's the only proof there is that you can win those big trophies but we're moving in the right direction I think I think the, the results are getting better the team's getting better the finishes each season are getting better and I think Ollie's earned at least you know uh, I mean I don't want to put a number of games on it but for me he's earned this season he's earned a chance to say let me build this team. Let me keep improving, which he has done. And let's see where we can go. I think, you know, he, he, he's done enough to, to be given a bit more time, yeah, at least. Um, in terms of the job he's done so far, Scotty, what do you think about the job he's done so far? Um, because I kind of agree that, look, the, the, the Manchester United that he took over, we weren't in a great position. And he was kind of like the medicine to all of that at that moment in time. He steadied the ship and he's built some foundation. Would you agree with him being a success, obviously without the trophies so far in terms of what he's done? Um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because yeah, everyone sort of goes and we, we he took over this toxic. Uh, I, it feels like a PR spin to be honest. Ever since like uh, Jose left, that everyone wants to say, "Oh, he took over this rubbish team." They won the Europa, Europa League a few seasons before. You know, Lou Van Gaal took over David Moyes' mess and won an FA Cup. Mourinho took over Van Gaal's mess and won a Europa League and finished second. Mm. Solskjaer's had more time than both and supposedly took over what was deemed like a, a toxic atmosphere and has, has come up short in terms of when you compare him about what trophies he's, he, he's provided. People want to talk about always oh, made a happy camp. That might be great, but I'm a Man United fan. I want Man United to win trophies. I don't care mm. if them lads feel like it's at Butlins every time they go to Carrington day in, day yeah. out. That, is, that isn't what I'm interested in. I want a manager that's turning the team into a machine that can go out week in, week out to, to win games, to ultimately win trophies. And the evidence mm. isn't there. And I know, Joe, that you're saying that you've seen success. His biggest success was, was that he wasn't Jose Mourinho. 
post Jose Mourinho. That was that was the biggest thing, and I don't think that he should have got given the job. Solskjaer, um, it isn't his fault. I don't, it was the Glazers giving him. It, he wasn't going to turn the job down, was it? Do you know what I mean? And I, I always mm. have a level of sort of sympathy with me. He wasn't going to turn around and go, you know what? I've only managed mould, and I got Cardiff relegated. I'm not too sure, lads, if I'm the right man for this job. I might have to back off here. But in terms of it being a success, I mean, is that where we are now? Where we are now? Because we had a decent, because we we, are, we had a decent league run. I, I, it's not for me. I think, I think, in terms of, I'll come to Joe in a sec. I agree with you in terms of. At the time, I thought mm, giving him the job. I don't, I don't know about this at all. I remember um, saying it. I think after Paris, like I don't think it would be a good idea to give him the job permanently. Let him see it out for the end of the season, and then make a decision. But once he's got given the job, the only thing that I've felt that he's got wrong and has has proven time again that, you know, maybe he's not the man, is when he's come up short in those semi-finals finals. And because I do feel the job he's done in terms of the squad build and the transfers that we've made predominantly have been pretty good. And I think a lot of the managers pre Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got that wrong. Um, Joe, what do you think um, in regards to, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer winning them trophies? Should he have, should he have had a trophy by now? Is it, is it, is it too much to say that what he's done can be considered success? I think or it's it's it, uh, it's too maybe much to... success isn't the right word that I'm using because I'm putting words into your mouth a little bit because I don't think you said that. But is it right to say like he's done a good job so far mm. without? those trophies yeah well what I said is that he has earned another season or at least earned a good go at this season I'm not you know if we lose every game between now and Christmas I'm not going to sit here and say this is working I'm not you know I, I like to think I'm not deluded I'm not just completely you know supporting the manager no matter what happens but I think we, we can talk about the, the trophy that the, the trophies that Jose won was a league cup and a, and a Europa League you know, of course, it's better to win some trophies than no trophies. That is undoubted. But I don't think there are many people that were stood when Jose were getting sacked saying, you know what, we should probably keep him here because he'd fallen out with the half of the team. He said, you know, Rashford's no good. He said Martial's no good. Shaw's no good. Pogba's a virus. I know that, you know, maybe some of that has been turned into Ole took over this rubble of a squad when really he had some good players. I get that. But we have to remember that Jose basically sacked himself. He he got to the point in Janu uh, in the summer where he didn't get the sign as he wanted. He didn't get the centre back he wanted. He got Fred forced upon him by the sound of things and he just went into Jose mode and, you know, tanked everything. I think we could all see that at the time. But in terms of what Ollie's done, it's not been a success in you know, you know, you look at Manchester United's history, success isn't finishing second in a couple of semi-finals. That isn't success. And we should have won the Europa League and we should have done better in, in, in a couple of those cups as well. But in terms of looking at giving the manager more time, the league, uh, the league finishers have progressed every season. We've been top four two years in a row and increasing our position each time, which neither Jose or Louis van Gaal did. They didn't finish top four twice in a row, either of them. Uh, we should have won the Europa League. But again, the Europa League isn't the mark of, I don't think, even success at United. If he'd have won that Europa League title, I wouldn't be sat here going, isn't it brilliant? We're back on top, lads. We've won a Europa League. <laughs> but, That's still, <laughs> but we shouldn't even be in the Europa League. But the That's thing not... is that, that he can't even deliver on that, Joe. You're saying well, that even winning the Europa that. League isn't a success. So it's even less than a success. I get that, but but again, I'm not saying it has been a, a, an out and out success. I'm saying if we keep improving our league position, it feels unfair to me to sack a manager that every season has done better than the last. And it's not like we, then, it's not though. like we've gone. Sorry, it's not like we've gone fourteenth to tenth. We've gone <laughs> third to second. There isn't much more, you know, improvement that we can do other than winning the league. And let's see if we can do that. Again, I think I'm perfect for this because I kind of lie somewhere in the middle of both of yeah. you. So, Joe, just to, just to come back to you. Yeah. So you're saying he needs time or he's been given, he should be given time, which I tend to agree with like sacking him now. I don't think that resolves anything immediately. Uh, but do you, like, do you feel confident in him being able to deliver upon what would be required in that time for him to keep the job? If you get what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I, I do get what you're saying. Um, and, and again, you know, to your point, Scotty, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that everything's been brilliant this season or that, you know, or, you know, Villarreal, <laughs> it goes either way. We had to win that game. We had to win the Europa League. We should have done better. 
I, I'm not certain, of course, that Oli can win a, a Premier League. Of course I'm not, because he's never won it before and he's never won it with United. So why would I be certain of that? Um, again, the thing that just irks me a little bit is I just don't, I don't think he's, he's... What we're seeing at the moment, sorry, is I, I believe is bad form. Like we started the season pretty well, then we've hit some bad form. And I think it's unfair to sack a manager on bad form. You know, you look at Louis getting sacked, we finished fifth that season. You look at Jose getting sacked, where were we, 14th or 10th or where it was, floundering in mid-table. Like I said before, he'd fallen out with everyone. That's when you sack a manager. You don't sack a manager after, what is it, four of the last six games we've dropped points in, five of the last seven games we've dropped points in. That's not enough to sack a manager. And yes, I don't know whether we can win the Champions League or the Premier League under Ole, but as I said before... We're progressing every single season. And if we can keep doing that, which, you know, we're, we're only two points off the top of the league. Yes, we played lesser teams. I get all of that. But we're not out of the title picture already. If we can keep progressing, I don't think now is the time to sack him when it's still possible to progress. And progression would be winning a trophy. We're out of the League Cup, fine. You know, I'd rather be in it, but it's not the, it's not the, the main title, is it? Let's be honest. It's not top three. So, you know, while we can still have a chance of progressing and moving forward like we have done already, I don't see why we would sack him. Would you agree with that he needs, that he's earned the time to get it right, Scott? Scott? Um, just before I answer that question, I'm not, this is, I, when I say I don't think he's the right man for the job, I'm not judging that on this season. This has always been a question mark that I've had ever since he, uh, ever, ever since he was sort of hired. Uh, and you say it might be a bad dip in form. And it, uh, and it could be that. And I imagine what happened to Christmas, was it last Christmas when he had a bad run of form and, he got, and it seemed like he was getting sacked then and we were having these conversations and he turned it around. That might happen again. But for me, it's, it's too infrequent. You know what I mean? We don't seem to go on these major mm. runs where we actually, you know, could be going on a title charge. Um, sorry, what was, it, what was the question? I mean, it, does, does he deserve time for the rest of the season? Do you feel like he's earned the time? Or are you suggesting we should sack him now? Because I know that you <clears throat> think he can't do it, but do you think he should be sacked right now? Uh, it, it, based on his whole career, and I, I, I don't think they should have brought him into the new season, to be honest. I don't think Man United will sack him at this point in the, in the season because it doesn't make any sense, uh, to be honest. And with, with the players that he mm. signed, he should be able to sort of, like Joel said, he isn't going to get sacked at the end of the season anyway, at, uh, at worst case scenario, if he doesn't win anything. So I, don't think, I think that's a little bit academic, whether he, he should or he shouldn't. Whether I've got any confidence that he can deliver on it, I, I, don't, think he, I don't think he can. So therefore, he shouldn't be in the job. Mm. It's, it's, I felt like after the severe game, sorry, not the severe game, the, the, what was the last, the Everton game, Everton game. I remember feeling after that, like, it felt like the severe game of the Jose. And it, at that time, Jose survived for a while, but he, he never quite got comfortable again in the job. Um, and I felt, I felt a little bit like, like that with Ali against um, Everton. And that was just a draw, but it just felt like, damn. Now, I don't know if that was me overreacting, but it felt like a significant result, um, especially with the squad that we've built at this moment in time. And that's what cranks the pressure up on him. Like the next 10 fixtures, I've got them, I've got them here somewhere. Um, obviously, we start with Leicester at the weekend, which in and of itself is a difficult game. Then we've got Atalanta, Liverpool, Spurs, Atalanta, City, Watford, Villarreal, Chelsea, Arsenal, Palace. That's our next 11 games. Like, that's a difficult, difficult run of fixtures. Um, a difficult one. And look, the pressure's on him at the moment, but I felt like that result was was a significant turning point and could prove to be. But as as Scotty said as well, I felt I think I did a video around just before last Christmas saying could Ali be gone by Christmas, and I might have done the same the Christmas before as well because he does always seem to go through these points and rescue himself. But ultimately, when he does rescue himself, he seems to always do enough apart from win a trophy in order to keep the job for the next season, and. It's, it's, it, I'm starting to feel like, look, I had my doubts at the start, but I'm starting to feel like the writing's on the wall a little bit. Um, and that's unfortunate because uh, all three of us here want to see him succeed. Yeah. Um, of course we do. Um, but you start to feel like the writing's on the wall. Um, what gives you hope, Joel? What What would you say to to me who's been a bit pessimistic at this moment in time? And could, look, I'm I'm usually optimistic and after we beat Leicester on the weekend, I'll be saying 21 is coming again. But 
what would you say, like, what gives you a little bit of hope in terms of that he can turn this around? And, or what do you think he can do between now and the end of the season to turn it around and deliver those trophies? Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, ju like just because I don't think we should sack him or, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I still see what you see. I still get yeah. the feeling. I still see what, you know, what goes on on Twitter, what we see in the comments, what you see around the ground. And that is, it feels a bit different again. It feels as though he's starting to lose people again. And I, so, I, you know, I'm not blind to that. Um, but what gives me a bit of confidence and gives me a bit of optimism is I think, you know, as much as you can talk about, maybe we don't quite have the the sort of the drilled in tactical, here's where you stand, here's where you stand, here's the passes we make, here's the sort of the goal that this team scores over and over again like City do. I do think we're seeing the best football we've seen since Sir Alex was manager at Manchester United. We score more goals more often than we have done since Sir Alex was the manager of Manchester United. I think uh, we've scored f f five goals or more, more than we did under Jose, Louis and David Moyes combined under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So we, I think it's almost easy to forget, especially Van Gaal. I know we're not saying let's get the Van Gaal back. The away record's decent as well, to be the fair. Away re we're currently on the greatest away record, the greatest undefeated away run of any top flight <clears> team in, in league history. You know, I, I know that doesn't win you a trophy, but that is a reason for optimism. Um, we've seen some terribly boring football over the last you know, five years before Ole came in. And I think it's kind of easy to forget that. And I know that just scoring a few more goals occasionally isn't going to win your trophies. But when I think of optimism and, and, and how things can progress, we've seen the progression in terms of the results. And I know it isn't the right progression because we had to beat Villarreal. I get that. But we've seen what seemed to be a semi-final curse. We got to a final, we lost it. Unforgivable, I, I understand. But hopefully the next final isn't lost. You know, it, it, there seems to be progression in that regard as well. Things are going in the right direction. At the end of every season, you look back and go, well, that season was better than last season. And we haven't been able to say that very much in the last eight years. That's what gives me a little bit of optimism. You know, I I'm not blind to the idea that things could go wrong and we are starting to see those cracks at the moment. But I just think at the end of the season, based on what we have seen from Ole, we will be looking back saying that was better than last season. And I think there's pretty much no room for manoeuvre. If, se if this season is better than last, we've at least won a trophy and, that, you know, and then we can start moving from there. But that's what gives me optimism. I think we're seeing a better Manchester United than we have done in recent years. Scotty, now I know you're a bit, obviously, you, you think it's maybe the writing's on the wall, but you'll be turning up at Old Trafford every week singing your heart out, optimistic that things will go right. Now, if you were to make a list or what does he need to do? Because we, we, you've said like you feel like he's out of his depth. He ain't going to win those trophies. Outside of basically win the league, win the Champions League, what, do you, what would you like to see over these next 10 games, 11 games, which are all difficult games, so it's a true test. What would you like to see more of, if, you, if I say two or three things? Um, or less of? Just, just some sort of structure in the team. I mean, last season, the, the running joke was regarding his substitutions, where he was leaving his substitutions till too late in the game. And I think that is, don't get me wrong, he, he is evolving on the job. I just don't believe that you should have an apprentice apprentice running the Man United manager's yeah. job. That, that, that's, what it, then that's very much what it sort of feels like. Um, strategy, formation, because it just... And I think, I, 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 I'm, I'm paraphrasing him here, but when he first started, he said some quote about his whole thing was similar to Alex Ferguson in that, he didn't want to give the players too much direction. He wanted to give them the onus on them to make decisions within the game. And for me, that's Ferguson was like the greatest manager of all time, but that's 1990s, not his football. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of a different game now where you have to have a bit more structure and foresight as to how you're playing the game. I mean, when we signed Varane, everybody, every single person I know across Twitter, in the stands, all my friends were saying that, Right, well, that means that we're going to take the brakes off and not play pragmatic football. Why are we still playing Fred and McTominay when we've got yeah. Champions League for Ryan at the back? That doesn't fill me <laughs> with any hope. Do you know what I mean? That 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 for sure, especially when he says we're playing we're playing the Man United way uh, and we're expecting this cavalier football. That doesn't say that doesn't scream optimism for me. That's that that mm. screams cautiousness, and that's why you get results like Aston Villa or uh, Everton and Villarreal was a lucky re lucky result if we're if we're absolutely honest. And I know. Joe, you were saying that you've seen signs of progression and that the away record's fantastic. But if you look, I've got, I've got these statistics earlier off uh, ESPN. So he's got a, his win ratio is decent. So he's won 59 of his games, drawn 32 and lost 34, right? 
that means that he's made he, he's got 177 points in his career if he class cup games as league games and he's dropped 170 points that's bang average he's lost 170 points but he's he's made 177 that's that's not optimism hmm. i mean yeah i think I, I, there was a point you made during the point i'll come to you in a sec joe yeah um when uh you mentioned the coaching and when you look at and I think when you look at some of the games that he's, he's done well in, the bigger games, but putting him up against Tuchel, Klopp, Pep, it's difficult over a, over a, over a season. In a one-off game, sometimes he gets it right. And I think he has to, you have to tip your hat to him when he does that. But it's consistently. And I think I mentioned it after the Everton game. And Benitez isn't a half-decent coach, but I was being speaking in general terms saying, you feel like, particularly at Old Trafford, our away record's great, as we just said. Particularly at Old Trafford, any decent coach can come there and get a point or get a result. And that is a worrying sign. Um, Joe, um, what were you, you going to say there? Sorry, before I cut you off. Uh, well, just to do with the, you know, the, the optimism and, and that kind of thing. I, I, I understand. I agree. I, you know, I don't think playing Freddie <laughs> McTominay every Excuse week is, is ideal for, for an ideal way to, to win in Premier Leagues. But I don't know another team in the top four that Scott McTominay and Fred would start every week for. And, and you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that you think this, but in my opinion, um, I think they are, I think in terms of win ratio, when they play and when they don't play, they're our most effective pair in there. Now, maybe you could say, well, we shouldn't be playing a pair, we should be playing a three. I, I get that, but I think you take sort of Bruno out of his natural position there. So, unfortunately, seemingly the best option we have is Fred and McTominay. And yes, that isn't particularly attacking, that isn't particularly exciting, but if we want to win more games than we lose, until we can improve on those players, that seems to be the best option we have. You know, maybe Just you can... to throw it back, Joe, is it an issue when... Because I hear this a lot and it frustrates me because we've... And I know someone will pull out some stat and say I'm wrong here, but we very rarely do well anyway with McTominay and Fred. And it's like, doesn't he as a coach or a manager, sorry, have to find a way with the resources that he has? Because that was one of our criticisms of, of, of Jose towards the mm -hmm. end. You can't just always cry for a signing. Yeah, You have to try and work something out. Yeah, definitely. I don't. I'm not saying that you know. Almost every league-winning team, other than maybe a couple of cities teams, have had weaknesses in that starting eleven. I'm not saying he shouldn't be able to overcome what one or two suboptimal players mm. and what is seemingly a brilliant squad elsewhere. That's why I'm putting this season down so far, hopefully down to form rather than you know a, a real a real problem there. Um, but on the other hand this is the team we've got. And do you think those players are good enough to win a Premier League? I'm not certain they are, especially in the midfield, which it's not like having Zinchenko at left-back, no offence to Zinchenko, but he was probably their weakest player last season. But he's at left-back and he's still pretty good. You've got your two people in the middle of the pitch, which take the ball from the defence, give it to the attackers and stop their attackers, uh, stop their defence giving it to their attackers over and over and over again. Uh, I hate the term engine room because it's overused cliche of a term, but that's the place where the ball is most often in the centre of the pitch and we have got our weakest players in there. That is a difficult thing to overcome. He should be doing a better job than he is, certainly this season, because the rest of the team is so brilliant. But it is something that's difficult to overcome, whether we should be able to, or a, a, you know, a, a greater historical manager than Ole could have overcome it or not. It's going to be difficult. It's such an important role. Mm. Go on, Scotty. Anything you want to add? Uh, I was going to say regarding the, you, you were saying earlier on about the great signings that he's made. And yeah, he has made some good signings. But if you're giving them the credit for it, then surely we should be starting the point in the finger at saying, well, if you knew you had McTominay and Fred and they weren't good enough <laughs> to, to, to win the league, then why are you not signing the centre, centre defensive midfielder? Because for me, as I know Sancho's come under the fire. So when I say this, I'm not saying it as a criticism of him, but we needed a centre defensive midfielder more than we needed a Jaden Sancho. Evidently. Well, um, yeah. I think we needed uh, both equally. But yeah, ev evidently maybe you could say that. But, the, but, the, but we don't know that, you know, this team with Ndidi in there with no Sancho would have won any more games because we, we haven't seen that. But I, the, thing with, the thing with Oli is, look at last season. I know he didn't spend a lot of money because Ronaldo was cheap. Varane was, you know, cheaper than you would expect. But he can't just... He's signing 
players in positions we need. We needed a centre-back. Maybe we didn't need Ronaldo. You could maybe say that one. But I think we needed a right winger. We, we haven't had one at the club in about four years since v Valencia came a right-back. And we hadn't signed one since 2012 when we signed Valencia. So we definitely needed a right winger. We definitely needed a centre-back. I think we there was a time when Tellers was signed that it looked like Luke Shaw wasn't going to be able to do what he has done. We needed a left-back. We needed a right-back before that because it was actually Young playing there. We've needed all the positions he signed players is mm -hmm. in but we, he hasn't had enough time or enough money or just quite that go on then get that one last player to, to fix that midfield yet I think we've needed players in all the positions he's signed I mean when you said that we signed him for right wing why is he insistent on playing Sancho on the left wing if he was a right wing do we need well, him? I, <laughs> I think that's a Rashford being injured issue isn't it I, th hope, I mean yeah, I'm, I think that, I'm under the I assumption when that. Rashford comes back Sancho will move out to that right hand side because at the minute our left, our left wing options are a chronically out of form Anthony Marshall or Pogba. Hey, so, hey, hey, yeah. he's, he's in form. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's in form. He scored bro. in his last game. He's in form. <laughs> My mistake. We're out of form, but he is smoking hot right now. <laughs> um, look, obviously, difficult games coming up. We'll have them all yeah. covered here. Hopefully, we'll all be buzzing and smiling after the game on the weekend um, and singing Ollie's at the wheel again. Let us know your thoughts on everything in the comments below. Look, I know there's still lots maybe to talk about, and we'll we will talk about it because he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, fingers crossed he proves the doubts in me and Scotty wrong and he, he proves the likes of Joe. I've got my right. doubts as well. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I've got, no, I've no, got I know, doubts. I know, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, it's true. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, anything else you like, want to add before I go? I don't want to leave you like, with something on the back of your minds. Uh, I, I was just curious as to if you would have thought, Joel, that Solskjaer would get this much time if it wasn't an, an ex-United player. Does that, does that, has that bought him more time and, and should it? Uh, first of all, should it? I would lean on the side of yes, to be honest. Uh, not to the extent, not, you know, you just get as, as long as you want because you used to play for United, good on you. But I think part of what he's brought to this club down the years and the, the fact that we know he understands Manchester United when you talk about styles of play and all these sorts of things and maybe it's not quite the way we would like it at the moment it's closer to what is this sort of United style of play than we saw for the last seven years. He definitely understands Manchester United. He scored 126, was it, goals for Manchester United. He gets Man United. So I think that, that can rule out one doubt, which is, is he just going to leave? Does he not care about the club? We know he loves the club as much as any of us sat here because it's been his club for, what was it, 12 years as well. And, and, he's, and he's won major trophies there. So I think it should maybe give you a little bit of leeway uh, but, you know, not necessarily go and have your full career here, no matter what you do. Um, and I, so far, actually, I don't think it's given him any more time. The only time that Jose and, and Louis got sacked was when they couldn't get top four. Jose fin uh, Louis finished fifth, I think it was, or, uh, and, and Jose was, you know, miles away and, you know, it wasn't going to happen. I think that's, that is the mark of United at the minute. And that's not my standards for Manchester United, but that seemingly is the, the Glazers' standards. If you can't get top four, you're gone. If you can, you can stay. So I, currently, I don't think that has bought him any more time, the fact that he is, you know, a United legend. Yeah, maybe not from the from the Glazers' point of view, because yeah. we, we sort of know what their ambitions are. But what yeah. do you think, Adam? Because from a fan's point of view, I definitely think when, I, when you speak to people on Twitter, you can't critique his work without people thinking that you're trying to undermine his status as a player. And for me, I'm able to sort of separate the two things, mm. the two separate entities. I am as well. I, I try to separate the two. Obviously there's a love for him that will always be there. And, um, you know, that's never going to go anywhere, but I think ultimately I do think he gets a little bit of leeway from fans because of that. I think it's natural, but I also think, you know, Van Hall and Mourinho, they lost that, leeway when they said or did stupid things and I don't think he has ever gone out of his way to antagonize the club or the fans and therefore I don't think he's ever had that inside the ground Twitter will always be you know it's either black or white there's no in between on Twitter and I, I try to disregard Twitter when I think of things I will I think Ali should be judged as a manager I think the time for giving him that leeway because he knows the club is gone because that's what we needed to kind of lay the foundations and get everything back to feeling how it should be. I think that's gone now. Um, he needs to be judged on, are you bringing home trophies? You're not going to find that out in, in, in September or October as we're in now. So I do think he'll get more time, but he needs to be judged on, are you bringing home the Premier League or the Champions League 
or the FA Cup and challenging for those two because if you're not, then then the time is unfortunately up and you've you've done as much as you can do. Yeah, I, I always like to remind fans because some of them on, on on social media particularly like to say that United are a sacking club and I don't know are you aware of the the history of you know Wilf McGuinness when he took over from Buster. Yeah. So in his first season, he actually got to three semi-finals and was sacked the following season. Do you know what I mean? But okay. in today's age, you'd, you'd expect mm. him to get a bit more time, wouldn't you, Joel? You'd be, you'd be Will Finn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, famously, I'm Will Finn. <laughs> but I've got T-shirts and everything. <laughs> get the hashtag going. Get that trending. I mean, that's a great place to leave it on a little bit of a laugh. Uh, boys, thank you very much for joining us. I know it's a bit of a down debate, but... It's a, I suppose it's a credit to the team that we now have that, you know, mm. managers are getting judged on whether you win or challenge for the Premier League or Champions League or not. And that's where we are right now. So, yeah, thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Joe, uh, make sure you follow him, Joe Smith 93 on all the socials. Uh, Scotty as well, Arkid, uh, make sure you follow him everywhere. Scotty and Marty, the link's in the description below. Um, thank you, boys. Thank you guys for watching uh, and we'll see you later.